What's going on guys? Radio Graffiti here. And today, I want to talk to you guys about Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Now, like many people, when I watched Mad Max Fury Road, I was like, wow, that's got to be one of the best action movies I've ever seen. So the bar was pretty high for Furiosa. You know, they announced they weren't bringing Charlize Theron back, which I thought was kind of a red flag at first. Because, like, how can you have a Furiosa movie without Charlize Theron, which is really the whole reason that that character even worked in the first place. But nonetheless, the film has come out starring Anya Taylor-Joy, kind of. There's a whole chunk of the film where she's not even playing the character. She doesn't even come in until about an hour into the film. But when she finally does show up, she's pretty solid. But who really steals the show is Chris Hemsworth. I know he's played a villain before in Bad Times at the El Royale. But it's been so long since I've seen that film, I don't remember anything about it. But yeah, he steals the show. He is fantastic. He is such a bastard that you want to see die. He is such a piece of shit. And I was happy to see him get his comeuppance at the end. Some other positives about this film. I think the action sequences are pretty good. My favorite would have to be the one in the middle. The one at the end is pretty good as well, don't get me wrong. But I think the middle has my favorite action sequence that occurs throughout the film. It's a shame we didn't get a little more action because, you know, Fury Road was basically just two hours of one long action sequence and then they take a break and then it's another long action sequence. But either way, I don't think the action's as good, which it probably wouldn't be because look how long and thrilling the action sequences were in Fury Road versus Furiosa. The costume design and set designs are all pretty solid and it's, it's really just amazing just to be transported into the world of Mad Max. You know, you got the war boys, you got all this dirt. Everybody just looks so filthy and tired. I just love being transported into this world. That's what I like about these sort of science fiction movies like this, where you just have a whole new world. It's completely different from what we're used to. It was nice to see Immortal Joe and some of his crew from Fury Road return in Furiosa. The whole beef that they have with Chris Hemsworth's character in the film was pretty funny. And very entertaining to watch. Probably my favorite scenes in the entire film is when it's just Chris Hemsworth meeting Immortal Joe and then, yeah, all their little exchanges and back and forth. Chris Hemsworth spends a lot of time in this movie with a megaphone. But yeah, we spend an hour with young Furiosa. She's very good in the film. I like how her character throughout is just a very silent, sort of all action, no talk sort of character. She doesn't have many lines throughout the film, which is fine. Not every character has to be a quip machine or just heavy on dialogue. That kind of makes Furiosa more of a unique character in this film. Basically the polar opposite of Chris Hemsworth. He spends a lot of his scenes just kind of, you know, kind of being a little goofy and loud. And, and then you get to her character and she barely says a word. Another positive about the film is it's very dark and disturbing. Mostly with some of the things that goes on with Chris Hemsworth's character. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to watch at certain points. Especially when there was like little bugs or whatever on Furiosa's arm. It was just kind of like, ugh, I don't want to see that. And then what happens to Furiosa's mom, I just, I didn't really want to watch that part. It was just kind of a little much. But I like that when make, movies make me feel uncomfortable. Just, I'd rather, you know, not the entire film. It's just, when there's a scene or two, it's, that's fine. It's a solid revenge flick. I think this is a worthy prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. Some of my negatives is just like some of the green screen is a little off at times. Some of the shots are just like, I don't really believe that that's in the desert. That looks very fake. I know in the trailers and TV spots, I show this scene of this guy with this giant head. And it's got to be the most lovable thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know why they put that in so many TV spots, but it looks so fake. And I'm just like, what in the hell am I looking at? But luckily, that's only like one shot of the entire film. It's also kind of weird that Charlize Theron is not in this film. Because you should have had her at the end. The ending of this film makes no sense. Spoiler alert. The ending of this film has Furiosa with the wives, you know, where she's trying to sneak them out from Immortal Joe. Now, I assume that this is a failed attempt to get the wives out. Because in Mad Max, Fury Road, is during the day and there's this whole thing and it's... Charlize Theron, whole different actress. So that's kind of weird the end of the movie like that. It's like at the last second, they're just like, um, how can we connect this to Fury Road quick? 
uh, I don't know, just have her try to get the wives out or something. So yeah, the ending was a little weird. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but that if that's what it's supposed to be, then that's a continuity error. So yeah, you could have just done without that part. But besides that, it's a solid film. I'd say go and check it out if you want a fun, action-packed film. That's absolutely mad, especially if you enjoyed Mad Max Fury Road, like I did. I think it's one of the best action movies that come out in the past decade. It is kind of weird that they took so long to make this movie, huh? Because Mad Max came out in 2015, and then Furiosa comes out 2024. Almost a whole decade ago, Mad Max Fury Road came out, so it's like... Who really cares about a Furiosa backstory anymore? I feel like the time has kind of passed for that. Everyone's kind of moved on. Nobody really cares anymore. That's probably why the movie's not doing so well financially. I mean, Fury Road wasn't a huge hit anyway, but, you know, to take so long for a prequel that's so heavily influenced by Mad Max Fury Road, it's just kind of weird that they waited 10 years for it. But either way, you guys, go check it out if you want. It's a pretty solid film. Better than I expected. I kind of expected this to be a little mid or trash. Cause like I said, all the weird shots in the trailers of fake looking scenes kind of put me off. And I was like, it's a Furiosa prequel. Who really wants to see this in 2024? But hey, Chris Hemsworth, he steals the show. He makes it worth the watch himself. So I'd say give it a shot. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Furiosa. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Have you guys had a chance to check it out yet? Do you like it more than Mad Max Fury Road? And what was your favorite performance in the entire film? For me, hands down, it's gotta be Chris Hemsworth. I mean, nobody else was really on his level in this film. But yeah, give me your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I will talk to you guys next time.